So it's Saturday morning and I don't fancy going out and doing any photographs. I've got the whole day to myself. So I've decided to do some photography indoors. One of the things I do like uh, make, taking photographs of is objects or flowers, uh, you know, with uh, controlled lighting and obviously on film making prints later on in the dark room. So I'm gonna be doing just that today with a new tool that I've got, which is a light box. I suddenly thought I could use for a background, for a nice white background. Try it out, see how it goes. So I'm off at the moment to go and get some flowers for my wife, coincidentally. Choose whatever I want to buy her, get back, nick a couple, take the photographs. <laughs> Okay, that's the shopping done. Next part is to get the flowers to my wife, get a brownie point, and then whip a couple of me photographs. <laughs> you like them? I love them, Roger. They're beautiful. Thank you very much. It's really kind of you. Sure. Or did you really buy one for yourself to go in one of your videos? <laughs> George, shut it. <laughs> so I bought this light pad the other day just so I can uh, review my negatives and show you guys my negatives on a light pad which is bigger than the one I've got in the dark room. So um, I bought this also for scanning uh, my negatives as well on DSLR. So I bought this light pad, it was about 30 quid on Amazon, that's the box there for it, which it came in. Um, it's great on the front there, it says artist start at copy and tracing, whatever that means. But um, seems to work quite well. I had a few mixed reviews, but I thought I'd give it a go. So far, it's been all right. And the light pad didn't come with any uh, plugs or nothing like that. It just it didn't even come with a, with a USB cable. So lucky I've got one anyway. And I'm powering it using a mobile phone charger power box, you know. But it's a real basic setup. I've got one LED panel. I'm using this piece of polystyrene, which is a bit of bounce as well for myself. Um, obviously, this is going to be my background. It's got three settings. That's dim, medium, and bright, the medium one does seem to flicker a little bit, but I don't use the medium one anyway. I'm always using the bright one. Um, but that's pretty cool. So that's gonna be my background. So I'll get a nice um, high key background going on. And for today's video, I'm gonna be shooting Adox's HR50 film, which is uh, quite a cool film. And also the Pentax Spotmatic F 35 mm camera with a 50 mm lens on there, Pentax 50 film, a 50 mm lens and a two and a half extension tube. So real simple stuff, uh, let's get going. So I'm gonna use my Sekonic light meter to do some incident metering and uh, you can use this on a phone app or whatever if you've got a calibrated incident meter that way. And I'm gonna put a couple of filters on as well just to see what this Adox HR50 is like with uh, a, a yellow, orange and red filter. Um, it's got an extended spectrum sensitivity, so it's near on sort of bordering um, infrared, this stuff. Pretty cool film, but I've never shot it um, in this situation before. And of course, there's the Pentax Spotmatic F. I got this camera for 10 quid, um, 10 pounds, years ago. And the only problem with it was the mirror was sticking. And I managed to get that fixed. And it's been okay ever since. I've had a couple of troubles with it in the past, but Nothing I couldn't sort out myself. And I was shit at loading films. <laughs> I had to put it on my lap. All right, so the film's in there now. Close the door. Okay, and I know I'm good to go because the film's loaded correctly. The advanced winder there, you can see, is winding with the film. So the film's getting loaded. Lovely jubbly. Put the lens on. I'm ready to set my scene up and take some pictures. Get on there. So now I've got my rows in place, all I need to do now is turn the LED panel on. Now we've got some light, some modeling light I can work with. So it's up to me where I want to place this LED panel um, and get the lighting that I want. A little bit dark over this side, which is why I then use the white foam board or the polystyrene, you can see. Fills in nicely. So I need a cable release as well, so I'm putting the cable release inside. Now what we've got to do is try and get a composition through the lens and through the camera. And just give me a little bit of softer light there. Point back towards the camera. And it's giving me one fourth of a second at 
uh, F8, just over F8, so um, I need to allow for that tiny extension tube that I've got, which is about a third of a stop, so I'm gonna bring that down to F8, one fourth of a second, that should all be good. Chuck a little tiny bit of light in there, a little bounce off of this polystyrene ball, take the first shot. So I've got my natural shots now without any filters. I'm now going to dabble with the yellow, orange and the red filter and see what I can get. Right, so I've done with a dead flower. I just quickly whipped out one of these roses from the rice vase. I'll put it back later, don't worry. So uh, I'll just put this one in there now. I'm going to do exactly the same thing and I'll show you those images. Just make sure that lighting's still the same, hasn't changed, no, it's good. I'm now going to bring the white board in. I left it away this time just to see what would happen. Uh, get a little darker side over here, but now I'm going to bring it more forward. So these last few shots, I've put the light cad much closer so it's reflecting behind these leaves, kind of giving it translucent behind these uh, rose petals, not leaves, the rose petals here. So uh, that'd be interesting, see how they look. Same lighting, I'm not going to change anything. The background will probably appear a bit whiter, but... And I've just adjusted the camera on the tripod so it's now looking down onto the petal and make sure I haven't got none of this in the, in the uh, frame at all. So I'm looking down, this time I'm going to choose some shallow depth of fields, one, uh, 1 1.8 and 2.8. And now just for shits and giggles, I've taken the light pad away, I'm just going to use my natural magnolia back wall there. This time I'm going to use the fill, bring that in a bit more. And that's done. All that's left to do now, rewind the film and get developing. I'm going to be putting this in Adox's FX30 developer, 39 sorry, FX39 developer. And I've only rewound that film enough so that I can now take it out and the leader should be hanging out. There you go. Get it out. And that way I can load that onto the reel easier, but only that I can reuse that cassette for my bulk load stuff. Sticking out the film like so, I can load it onto my reel much easier before I take it into the dark room. There's my leader, I can now get that into the dark room, put it on the rest of the reel in the tank, start developing. And there you go, the film is now inside the tank, that's the end of the film which I can use for bulk loading, another cassette that I can use there. There's the original leader I cut off. It does say loading subdued light, um, but for this demonstration I haven't. So here's the FX39 that I'm using, and I've got 300, just over 300 mil of, or 311 mil of water, and this is one part to nine, so I'm gonna add 39 mil of developer to make me 350 for my 35 mil film. And I'm gonna go for seven minutes, it's seven, seven minute 15, but I'm gonna go for seven, see what happens. Developers in there, lid on, start the clock. And I'm just going to develop this normally, my versions, so I'm going to do five inversions every minute all the way to the end. Stop, fix, wash and dry. Whee! Well, they look different. Uh, okay. They look alright. They uh, look good. So you see, when they dry, we have a look at them on the light box. The one I bought. <laughs>
So I'm in the dark Rooney now with the negatives and I've already selected the negative that I want to make a print of which was funny enough one of the last photographs I took at um, f2.8. I just thought that one looked quite nice with that shallow depth of field to make a print of the rose and I've already been in here for a while dabbling about with that negative under the enlarger doing some tests and stuff. I think I might have got where I need to be. I'll just show you what I was up to. So I did my first test on the enlarger using a two and a half grade filter for this multi-grade paper and that's my test there. Uh, increments of two seconds, two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. Eight seconds was about right for me, so I did an overall test of eight seconds, and then I started to get these blooming airs and bits and dust and stuff uh, on the print, so I spent quite a while trying to clean the negative. And also the carrier as well, I'm using a glass carrier now, I've got this glass um, carrier for my Durst Enlarger. Uh, it's just, it, it's nice, it keeps the negative really flat, it's anti-Newton glass, but Unfortunately, it does collect the dust and crap, so it just takes a little bit of time to get it off. But once it's off, it's quite worth it, I found. So yeah, bugger me, the um, little tiny marks and that I had to figure out. But anyway, I did an overall print of um, eight seconds with a two and a half grade filter, and then I worked out areas that I needed to try and burn in a little tiny bit to make it more pleasing. You can see I've marked it here. And what I did, I just put a contrast five filter under the uh, enlarger, used my burn tool, and just concentrated on some of these edges uh, and stuff around here which then led me to this print here. So you can see the difference here, just around the edges just makes it pop a little tiny bit more, a little bit more pleasing. And then I put a little tiny border around it, but it's not great, I need to get rid of these dust marks, try and make that border a little bit better. And to make that border, you can see I've got my easel here, uh, it's an eight by eight inch square print that I'm making, so you know, I'm doing my own thing with it, it's a, it's a 35 mil neg, but I'm, I'm turning it into a square neg. And to make me border, I've just cut out an eight by eight piece of matte board, so after I've made my projection on the paper, I just put that over the top, burst white light, and it should give the um, edges of the paper a black border, but hasn't gone too well, so I might have to do a bit more jiggery pokey with that, but that's what I've been doing. Let's try and make another, I can't even get it out. Get out, your bugger. Yeah, and this uh, glass carrier started to become a right pain in the knickers for me. Uh, where's my blower? So I have to just keep looking, seeing where the dust's falling on it. The trouble is, by the time you've got it back into the enlarger, another little tiny piece of dust has fallen in it. And I, I generally keep my darkroom dust free, you know. But, shit happens. I've got this little tiny cloth that I just wipe over it. Anti-static cloth with a sponge underneath. And it's still, it's still got bits on it, unbelievable. I think that could be good. Carefully put it in the enlarger. It might work. So in goes my two and a half grade filter, which is what I did all my tests on, and that's the filter that I'm using uh, for my base. And I know it's tricky for you guys to see what I'm doing at the moment because I've got the red lights turned down because uh, I need to see the image clearly on the on the on the um, easel there. So eight seconds. It's a nice negative to work with. Just doing that in case there's any uh, dust falling or whatever onto the paper. It's just a habit I've got. So that's that done. Now I'll put the two and uh, the five filter in. Like so. And just go around the edges freestyle however I want. So I'm just li literally brushing around the edge of the flower and into the middle as well where the uh, little tiny ro rolls of petals are. Back around the left hand side. So I'm trying to keep away from the, the middle but just trying to get the edges going. And now obviously on the leaf at the bottom. Now it's time to put my border in. So I'm literally just using this to cover the paper or the light that's just made that image. I'm just putting some weights on it to hold it down so it doesn't bow. All right, let's try that. So we take the um, filter out, take the negative out to one side, give it a burst of white light. Hopefully, that'll work. Done. That's all I needed. And then it goes to the developer. I'll leave it in there for about a minute. This is Ilford's multi-grade developer. The border started to come out. That looks better. And it's down to the rest of the print for all the blacks to start coming through. 
there's going to be a couple of specks of dust I can imagine but if I'm going to frame this which I possibly will I can just spot them out with some uh, spotting inks that I've got a little bit tedious but it's worth it if you've got a decent print this one looks okay actually into my stop bath there's a couple of little dust spots I could see on it now but here's what it is and into my fixer the reason I've got my fixer tray on the top is just space saving I've just got to be very careful not to um, splash any fix into the stop or the um, developer so I've kind of got used to the working like this, but it's a bit of a space saver, that's all. Turn the lights on. It's come out nice. Not bad at all. This is all clean fresh water. A little tiny bit of rinse aid in there. Just to help the uh, washing a bit. Resin paper, just plastic coated so the water just, all the chemicals just slip off of it. It's not like fibre where it gets stuck into the fibres. So a few minutes in there, we'll be done. I'll just push that one out of the way and there it is there. Let that dry off. So that was a load of fun on a Saturday morning playing around with that light panel and some LED lights and just seeing what I can come up with with the flowers that I bought my wife. Obviously this has gone back in the vase now so she's well happy. And uh, my team won at football in the afternoon, come in the dark room, made some prints in the evening. So that's the print that I've come back with. Got the little border okay. I'm going to actually frame this. You saw an illustration of the frame earlier on. Sometimes I do that in Photoshop just so I can get a visualisation what it's going to look like when I make a frame. And uh, as you guys know, long term subscribers got loads of frames indoors. Uh, so I'm going to get this one framed I quite like the print put it back up there because it's still drying and that's pretty much simple photography that anyone can do it doesn't even have to be an LED panel you can find a lamp or something as long as you've got some sort of lighting going on around the flower and you can bounce a little tiny bit in with some white card or something you end up with some nice results the uh, LED panel that was interesting for me to try out so hopefully it's giving you guys some inspiration and there's a couple of other videos down here guys that you might find interesting if you haven't seen it, especially to new subscribers thanks for watching hope you enjoyed the video I'll catch you next time